So I get asked all the time, how do I clean my rifle? How often I clean my rifle? Which products I should use to clean my rifle? And a whole bunch of other questions when it comes to cleaning rifles. In today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a rundown how I clean my precision rifle, how often I clean it, and which products I use. So hang around till after the intro. It's about to get pretty interesting. Last time I heard that while somebody was putting on a rubber glove, it was not a pleasant experience, if you know what I mean. Now I know what you're thinking, you're wearing two rubber gloves, not kind of the video we're hoping to tune into today. Here's why I'm wearing rubber gloves. It depends what you're using, but in a lot of cases you guys will be using some sort of chemical process to get rid of carbon or copper or whatever the case may be. I'm not gonna go down that route, but I do have a job and I do like looking presentable, not having black grime things in my hands. So I always keep a little box of like rubber gloves that you can get at the chemist on handy. It's nice for when you're working on your firearms that you can keep your hands nice and clean and you're not being exposed to chemicals, especially if you're shooting a lot. I mean, if you're using like copper cleaner and um, carbon cleaner every weekend or every week on multiple rifles, that's a lot of unnecessary exposure to pretty strong chemicals. So I just kind of want to avoid that. Anyway, and these are great. Afterwards, you just flick them off when your hands are clean, so hunky-dory. I also use these for reloading and a whole bunch of other stuff throughout the house, so they're actually quite nifty to, to have on hand. So without further ado, the first thing I'm gonna do before I clean my rifle is obviously make sure the rifle is safe. In this case scenario, I had the chamber flag inserted pretty deep into the chamber, so I know there is nothing in my rifle. I will also, for the purpose of the exercise, cycle that bolt. Um, right, so next thing I'm gonna do is remove my muzzle brake. Now what I really like about these MDT muzzle brakes, I pretty much have them finger tight just like that. And that was how I would take it to a match too. Um, amazing, if, you, if your gunsmith fits your muzzle brake right, that's how you can get your muzzle brake on and off. You don't need tools or anything like that. Now specifically with regards to cleaning my muzzle brake, I will clean this maybe every, I don't know, 500 rounds or so pop that into the Sony cleaner. Be careful because it can ruin your finish. This is a new one, as you can tell, it's not gone through the Sony cleaner. Um, so MDT leak break, by the way, if you were wondering what that break is. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull my bolt out and pop that off to one side. If you want, you can have a little piece of cloth where you can put things down if you don't want oil all over your furniture. Do not do this on your wife's dining room table or your parents if you're cleaning your rifle. At your parents' place, at your own place, do what you want. I'm all for that. I see a lot of guys going wrong by not using one of these. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is a bore guide. You don't want any sharp metal objects scraping on the side of your chamber or the throat of your rifle. So you wanna insert this guy into your bore as so before you start cleaning your rifle. Let me pop that back. Make sure we go in nice and smooth. Right, there we go. I'm gonna tighten that down. Now this basically means that none of the cleaning stuff I'm gonna be using for using solvents, none of that stuff's gonna fall into your trigger group here and cause you troubles down the line. The next thing I quite like to do when I clean my rifle is I try and keep like an old water bottle or something. Because if you're gonna be pushing patches through or working with like a brush, this is quite nice to collect any, but look, I mean, look at all that splatter. That's gonna go in your house somewhere. So I keep this guy like that. And Bob's your uncle. All the icky stuff's gonna get caught in that. And if you're pushing those patches through, as soon as you pull back on that cleaning rod, it's gonna leave the patch that side. When the bottle's full, I get rid of it and I take a new bottle. It's a really nice way just to sort of contain the mess especially if you're living with a, a female partner. Um, we don't want to be messing in the house, our hobby. We don't want to give them an, a reason to to, worry, to complain about that. Not that my wife ever does, she's amazing with that. But yeah, it just makes your job easier for cleaning up afterwards. Now, when it comes to the actual product you use, I have tried everything. I struggled really bad on one of my other rifles with copper fouling. Now, copper fouling was so bad that if I looked down the barrel from the front, I could actually see the copper coming out of the rifling. And I literally went from Bortec, Gunsmithy, Hoppies number no. 9, 
everything and I scrubbed and I scrubbed and I couldn't get it to work so I got approached then at the same time I sort of did my my sponsorship with Bullet Central and they said hey we've got this cleaning product why don't you give this a try so I've got some here to the side but I do have a new packet here it's called Thoroughclean. Now Thoroughclean is an interesting system because it's sort of like a bore paste, like a Nyoso bore paste mixed with something else. I don't know, but it works. So how you use it is quite simple. Maybe if you're gonna pick this up, just read the instructions, but I'm gonna give you guys a rundown with this packet that's already open. So you're gonna wanna be applying some Thorough Flush to a new patch. Now guys, make sure your patches are appropriately sized for your rifle, otherwise, you may struggle with a patch that gets stuck and if you've cleaned a rifle and you get a patch that's stuck that's never a, um, never a fun experience so I always with my very first patch I try and make it a little bit smaller just because if there's extra crap in there you just want that first one to go through a little bit smoother so I'm gonna apply some of this and while we do that I'm gonna chat you through the frequency that um, I clean my rifle with your cleaning rod guys, get a proper cleaning rod, don't skimp on the cleaning rod. You don't want metal, a stainless steel cleaning rod, so get something with like a soft little coating like this on the outside if you can. So that first one's going to go straight through, run that straight back, put on another one but not tear off any of its sides. And this one's going to be a little bit tighter. And really with the flutter flush, what you're trying to do is just get rid of any I'm running out. That's why I've got another one ready to go here on the side. Um, what you really want to do is just get rid of any gunk that may be in that barrel from the last time that you shot that. Now if I pull this off, this rifle's probably now got about 150 rounds through that and that is what the second patch is going to look like when I pull that out. And I'm going to dump that straight back on there and put my empty water bottle over the side because the next step it's gonna get messy if you don't have one of those. I'm gonna take off the little, whoops, let me grab that. Okay, cool. Now, when it comes to bore brushes, you do not want to use a brass brush. What I want you guys to do very carefully, now let's pay attention. If you've got a brass brush, okay, take it, open your bin and chuck it away and go buy one of these nylon brushes. This is what you want. You don't want to be brushing up and down your rifle and barrel with a brass brush. So we're going to put this guy on. Then we're going to shake our thorough clean. Now, it does make a very peculiar sound. We're going to pop that down over there. I usually just lay my cleaning rod sort of on my table. Let me see if I can do this for you guys on this side so you can see what I'm doing. Again, super important to have this bore guide because this is basically like a paste type of thing that we're gonna apply to the front of this brush. And I'm gonna apply this quite, whoops, see I'm already messing here, generously. Um, something that I always keep in hand too is a bit of TP, a little bit of toilet paper off the side, but that is actually at my other workbench. So I'm gonna run over there and just grab some. I'm gonna push this guy through all the way, pull it back. Now you really wanna work this brush back and forth quite a few times. Um, I don't specifically keep count or anything, I just go back and forth quite a few times making sure to maintain a smooth stroke throughout and it works if you build up a little rhythm. Now all of a sudden you will notice that that blue nylon brush is completely black. I'm going to grab some paper on the side here and just wipe this brush down or the rod down all the way so to avoid that gunk going on my clothes. I'm going to turn it off and put it down. There we go. And I'm going to leave it in the paper. Make sure when you leave it in the paper like this that you don't throw away the whole thing. And I'm just going to run that under hot water just now and it's going to run off most of that gunk. In fact, it goes pretty much, it looks like it's brand new. I'm going to pop the little jag back on. Give it a new patch. Now on this patch, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a bit of thorough clean to the top of this patch quite generously. I'm gonna just fold it like this and spread it out just a tiny bit so we've got some on the whole patch. And I'm gonna run a couple of these patches down the bore. 
Here if you want, just to make your life a little bit easier, especially if you're going to be using stuff. Let me park that. These things always want to walk away with you. If you want to make your life a little bit easier, you could run some toilet paper or a little cloth on the back of your rifle. And if you're messing stuff on your stock, at the end you can just pull that away. So clean patch through. Oops. It's already looking pretty good. Other than, the, than running the brush up and down, I would say I probably did about 20 strokes on that. Maybe a little bit more. I haven't really cut the video at all. So I'm going to show you guys what this, this is only the second thorough clean patch we're going to run through this. And this video is pretty much going to be real time. So I do this process every time I shoot my rifle. I clean my rifle every single time after I shoot it. Because I want, oh, I forgot to show you that patch. No, never mind, we'll do another one. Um, I want my rifle that each time that I go to a shoot or I go out to practice or whatever the case may be, if I need to use my rifle, I know it's in the exact same state as it was in the first time I used it last, if that makes any sense. So I know where my first shot's gonna be because I always have a clean rifle and I try and zero my rifle on that actual first shot. And I have found doing it this way, for me at least, with this rifle, this is a 6.5 Creedmoor by the way. I'm going to show you guys this. Now there's quite a bit of stuff still on this. But I'm going to show you how that gets significantly better in the next little bit. Now how much you want to clean this, completely up to you. I'm not too finicky with it being spotless when it does come out there, but bear in mind we're introducing more stuff every now and every time we run a patch through we're putting a little bit more thoroughly now you want these patches to be pretty tight um, and uh, anyway so I clean my rifle every time I use it now the one other reason I do that is where I live in Cape Town we stay in a coastal region there's a lot of coastal moisture in the air here and uh, that's looking way better there's a lot of coastal moisture in the air here and when you shoot and there's copper that stays behind in your barrel so I don't know if you guys remember when you were little, like your grandmother's bed, if she had a copper bed frame, it would do that green sort of oxidization. Now, if you don't clean your rifle barrel when you live by the coast, I've had this confirmed by my gunsmith, which has been a gunsmith for ever. I'm going back to the thorough flush now, by the way, um, just to flush out sort of any of the, the excess thorough clean. I'm just gonna clean up this little section not to introduce more thorough clean that's potentially stuck in this. Obviously the first one or two is gonna have some of that on. And just move my little piece of toilet paper a little bit forward. We've got some Benjamins on here, if you guys didn't notice that. Um, so what was I saying? So yeah, oxidization does happen um, inside your barrel with the copper if you're at sea level and there's a lot of moisture. So just be careful on that. But that's the main reason I'm doing it, as I said earlier is that I want my rifle to be in the same state it was it, and then it just makes it more predictable for me every time I do use it. So a couple of more of these patches and we should be pretty much good to go and then we'll move on to the bolt which is the easiest thing in the world to clean. Looking very good. This is probably going to be the second to last patch. I'm going to add a little bit more flash on this one. Now, how long does this product last? I've been using Theroclean. This is, I'm filming this at the end of July. Yeah, okay. So that was, I lost count there a little bit. But this was the last patch that I've just run through there. I mean, that is pretty special pretty damn spotless if you ask me. Um, I'm gonna run a few just normal patches through there now and uh, I'm gonna take away this, pop that down over there. So it is now the end of July 2019. I've had this specific set, this box bottle of Thorough Clean and the Thorough Flush since December 2018. So it's lasted me let's say seven and a half months at least. Um, Mm, looking good. So that's pretty good. I have been a little bit um, heavy on the thorough flush 
because that's run out way faster than the actual thorough clean. Now, initially I just used to do the brush method and then Chris Harris from Bullet Center actually advised me to start doing it on patches too. Okay, mm, it's looking pretty good guys. Look at that, I'm gonna do one or two more and I kind of call that good, to be honest. I was listening to a very interesting podcast the other day from some fellow precision rifle shooters and uh, guys that are really good in America and they were discussing their cleaning methods. And the one guy actually said that he puts a new barrel on and he literally just goes out and he shoots until he shoots his barrel out. He never, ever, ever, ever cleans it. So, uh, yeah, I guess it shows you that there is no sound methodology to what we're kind of doing here. Like, what works for you might not work for somebody else. But uh, for me, peace of mind, just having, making sure I've got a clean rifle. It's just sort of part of my preparation to for when I do go out and uh, shoot a match or something. So that's pretty much what I'm left with now. And I'm going to call that good. I'm going to pull the cleaning rod out, put that one side over here. Take the bore guide out, pop that guy down over here. I'm going to take some toilet paper and spray some thorough flush on this. Usually what I do is I've got a little bit of alcohol spray too that I do use, um, but thorough flush will do for now. And I'm simply going to wipe my bolt down like that. Make sure I get the bolt face here behind the lugs. Then I'm going to clean my raceways, literally just with some toilet paper like so. And this is sort of my quick clean. Every now and again I'll do a deep clean where I'll actually work in the chamber itself with a little bit more specific tools. But for the most part it's literally just a big piece of plastic with a little claw on and I've got something that's the size of my chamber and I work that in there. And I also work sort of where the recoil lugs engage. I don't oil my bolt because we're always shooting in the mud. Put that back and then tighten our muzzle brake. And usually what I do is I would put a tiny little level on this to make sure that I do have it level. Now while I'm tightening up my muzzle brake, you will notice that I did not do any work on my crown. Now the crown does build up. Yeah, I'm gonna pretty much call that good. I'll check it again with a bubble level to make sure it's there. But that is money, it's gonna be tight. I'm gonna go shoot it just like that. So now it's pretty much as easy as taking off your gloves. If you wanna go pick up dog poop while you got the gloves on, up to you. You will also notice I didn't run an oil patch through there. I also didn't clean my crown. I'll clean my crown generally every second time that I do clean my rifle. And I'll just use a little bit of solvent to get rid of any of the carbon buildup on the front of your crown there. It should make this little flowery pattern on there. And that pretty much takes care of that with a little bit of solvent. Other thing is I don't run an oil patch down my barrel after I've cleaned it. The reason for that is I coat my bullets with HBN. So the next time I go out and shoot, I'll put a little patch on the front of a jag, spray it with some HBN soaked alcohol spray, run that through my barrel and I'm going to take it out shooting just like that. Guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button if you haven't already. Please follow me on Instagram. I want to grow that too. It's been phenomenal sharing this journey with you. I hope this helps some of you with regards to cleaning your rifle, simplifying the process maybe a little bit. But for me, it's all about efficiency. I want to make sure my rifle is in a good condition, a condition that I trust it in, and I don't want to spend unnecessary time tinkering in the garage. I'd much rather be out shooting. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Comment down below if you've got any cleaning tips that I can learn from or anybody else watching this can learn from. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.